And I can't find a seconder usually when I propose this, but I don't care. I don't need a seconder. My own opinion is enough for me, and I claim the right to have it defended against any consensus, any majority, anywhere, any place, any time. And anyone who disagrees with this can pick a number, get online, and kiss my ass. He knows if you're going to go into something that's been excluded in a pretrial order, you better ask the court, you better get permission. This is ridiculous. It, was, know, it wasn't excluded, Your Honor. You know why it was excluded in the first place? Because it's, it was propensity evidence. That is exactly what 90404 is designed to prevent. You're talking about his attitudes. His attitude is he wants to shoot people. Now... I've admitted that kind of evidence in other trials when it's been appropriate. I didn't admit it in this case because, to me, what I've heard in this trial, and by the way, Mr. Richards absolutely correctly points out that just hours ago I said I had heard nothing in this trial to change any of my rulings. That was before so the why? Testimony, Your Honor. Pardon me? That was before the Don't defense testimony. Don't get brazen with me. Uh, uh, you knew very well. You know very well that an attorney can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled without asking outside the presence of the jury to do so. So don't give me that. So there. A representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed are greater than the legal services provided by other lawyers. I'm Harry Still. You found the Backstory Podcast number 107. I have my client and partner in crime, Mr. Paul Ripp, in studio with me today. How are you, Mr. Ripp? Here, alive and well. And Mr. Russian, how's things in the Houston Bureau? Not too bad. We're going to uh, burn up the remains of the fence tonight, not go to any concerts, and wish Paul a very happy belated birthday from two days ago. It's not something that I forget. Marine Corps birthday, 256 years. So Governor Ivey joins A.G. Marshall on federal lawsuit opposing vaccine mandates. We gave you that last week. Um, and today, we celebrate one of the favorite traditions at the mansion, the 73rd annual turkey pardoning. A couple of high-stepping tur- uh, turkeys, and you know what to say about a high-stepper. No step too high for a high-stepper. Now, Range, you thought that was a joke at first, right? But she literally said that a few years ago, and... And I think it's yeah. interesting that the names of the turkeys are always Clyde and Henrietta. That's you know. what gave me pause, you know, <laughs> because if anything, Alabama maybe does better than Mississippi or Texas is generalized death. So <laughs> when we're pardoning two uh, things, if we're giving two things the gift of life at the state's behest, <laughs> let's not cloud it up with generalities. Just give them the same name. No doubt. <laughs> well, Ivy seeks delay of thir- third grade reading permission require promotion requirement. So if you if you're not reading at grade, they don't pass you. What do you think about that, Reigns? Do you have many people you graduated with that couldn't read? Well, I think a lot about that. Uh, yeah, I went to school with a bunch of kids who couldn't read when they were in third grade, and. Uh, I kept going. You know what I called them? Third graders. Third graders. Because <laughs> I kept getting past fourth and fifth grade. And we kept calling them third graders because they stayed in the third grade and didn't get past. So from de facto governor to the University of South Alabama president, well played, sir. The University of South Alabama picks Joe Bonner for president. Is that any surprise? The former congressman and current chief of staff for Governor Kay Ivey was one of three finalists for the position. Now, do you know what his background is in education? You're going to tell us. He worked for the University of Alabama Systems doing economic development. Not in a classroom. Yep. Not in a classroom. So, well, anyway. you know, to be fair, the state of Alabama doesn't have the greatest track record in hiring people that are experienced for the job. I mean, the guy running your business development company right now, or your economic development company for the state of Alabama, wasn't he a Air Force pilot or something? And yep. the guy running the something else, they were a you know an A ten pilot in a war or something. Yeah, 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 or a, a or a journalist. 
It does make you wonder what, what qualifications. Don't be fooled. Do. Nobody ever gives journalists jobs. Right. Yeah, they do. So, uh, Baltimore County Legislative Delegation, you're looking at the all 10 of them. And th- there is uh, Greg Albritton's district. You see uh, Taxman Elliott's district. And um, it's just incredible to me that they, we didn't try it well. And then we got uh, Vivian Figures who came across the Spanish Fork. Right. And uh, it's asinine to think we couldn't nest two cities. And if, it, if they was ever, if they was ever a massive pearl clutching taking place on the Eastern Shore, it was the announcement that the Lady Vivian Figures, Madam Vivian Figures, would be appointed to the legislative delegation. My God! What well, happened? you know, somebody did shoot her damn house up a couple months ago. Hadn't seen anything in about that in the paper except for when it happened. So. Let, let's not play Snow White with Miss Figures. She's she's a big girl and can defend herself. She's been around a while. Yep. So there's the house districts. You see uh, the Indians uh, state state rep takes in all of their interest all the way down through Baldwin County to Orange Beach, and uh, my hometown, which which uh, was named the uh, team of the week by Lanyap, playing for the uh, in the high school. Football championships tonight, 6A, and uh, our little town got busted up into four different districts. The crossroads of districts now. Mm-hmm. So McCutcheon, that's some things he said prior to the session, saying we weren't going to do any COVID stuff, and of course they did. And, um, yeah, that was his statement the other day. We had a couple of little brush fires that arose during redistricting, but they were dealt with. He anticipates challenges. I think to one the of the biggest maps. brush fires that arose was the fact that they couldn't get the damn maps. Yeah, they, they voted on maps that they never got to look at because the 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 documents office couldn't print them or didn't they have. They were changing them. these things so fast they couldn't keep up with the printing. Good. We didn't get them till Wednesday. They approved them Monday. What? 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 <laughs> Yeah. Is there a better way? Well, pretty much any way other than the way you did it, Mr. Pringle, would right. be a better way. It would also be nice if you talked to somebody beforehand. No kidding. And I'm telling you, everybody in our legis- legislative delegations on my list over this one saying they weren't on, the, you know, we weren't involved or I wasn't on the committee. What a bunch of bull. Mm-hmm. So Johnson & Johnson is to become two companies, Reigns. How will that affect shareholders? Yeah, I got a job offer. <laughs> I got a job offer. They're going to uh, they're going to split off. I think they're facing some pending litigation regarding the uh, yeah, well, opioid crisis. Yeah. See, they had to spend and, half uh, of the revenues the thing, of the company. They need, a, they need a patsy. They need somebody to really, you know, you know, when a company splits off like that, they're going to need somebody to take the fall. So. I'd like to proudly announce that I will be the CEO of the Big Johnson Corporation. Um, we will be completely separate from the Little Johnson Corporation. If I'm to understand this correctly, Harry, uh, FedEx is on its way to your house for the job offer for that position. Well, thank you, sir. i tell you what, Johnson & Johnson has multiple, multiple, multiple companies under it, too. Johnson Wax that <clears throat> makes... Johnson Johnson. Canoe, they they own Old Town Canoes. They make canoes. They used to own scuba. In, uh, I don't know if they still ocean do. kayaks. Scuba All bro. the kayaks I own. They. I don't. Johnson I don't know does. if you guys are aware of this as well, but Johnson and Johnson is on its heels really bad from the talcum powder. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, but so let's get, not forget about that. But having right. this could be all part of a strategic restructuring. Yeah, right. well, having the Oklahoma Supreme Court overturn a five hundred million dollar verdict against you kind of helps things. Yeah, that's nothing to Johnson and Johnson. They're looking at future exposure, believe me. Right. Or the next time they hook everybody on something, mm. that's what I'd be looking for. So Biden plans big infrastructure bill signing. I guess that's Monday rains. Yep. And none of the G- so the GOP backers all face death threats. I guess the uh, well, I don't think there's a whole lot to that. You know why crowd. I think that? Why? You know, you know why I think there's not a lot of sense to that GOP backers face death threats because the first lady is going to be in Houston this weekend. Like I've parked my car. I'm not going out anymore this weekend. <laughs> and cuz every time somebody presidential comes to town, you think the traffic's bad normally. Christ, it just completely just stops. Shoots it over the moon. 
So there are your GOP reps who joined in voting in favor of the bill. Adam Kissinger leading the list. Yes, like Alaska, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, West Virginia. You you don't see South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, none of that. Nope. So it's all the rhinos. First wave of borrowers get $715 million in student loan forgiveness. So, Reigns, did you look up that acronym? <laughs> there's there's a program not. where if you go to the go to work for the government or take a job in a rural area, like say you're a doctor, then they'll you do you go do a ten year stint in Alaska and they'll pay pay off your student loans and that that program is being expanded. And uh, anyway, it's on Forbes dot com if you want to go read the, read about what all the uh, positions are. Unfortunately, everyone I know is outside of that age range where that's going to be a possibility um so one more time the new york post says biden's bill back better will hike taxes 30 percent on middle class families i don't believe that okay well we'll see i don't believe it's gonna yeah, be i didn't bad. think gas was going to four bucks but hold on <laughs> to your hat bitches yeah and overall inflation at what six percent a little bit more and the caravan moves closer to the united states and supposedly Biden angrily defends DOJ plans for 450K for migrants separated from their families. We'll see how that plays out. Talk about something to get people up at the Capitol with some torches and pitchforks. So uh, our local uh, congressman has filed a bill that would uh, halt the expansion of IRS's Army of Agents approved in the new Build Back Better Act. How many new how many new fibs they gonna hire? How many new accountants range? Have you heard? Uh I believe the IRS is just wanting to get back up to operative full strength that it had under the uh uh early years of the Obama administration. And I believe they're gonna probably hire around six thousand nationwide. Yeah, that's that you sounds flat like a great idea. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's 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 about six thousand because they had a they also are dealing with something else that a lot of people don't talk about is a mass number of retirees in 2019, 2020, and twenty twenty one because so many people started federal jobs uh, and kept them for so long and dealt with furloughs and everything else that they're retiring at twenty five instead of thirty these days, twenty five years of service I mean, right. instead of thirty, which is the most you can do in federal service. Well. More than 4.4 million workers left their jobs voluntarily in September, the highest number on record. That's absolutely right. Hard to tax and people's I'm income when they ain't working. There is a lot of people that talk on social media about the Civil War and about all oh, this. We're going to raise and riot and everything else. Folks, this is happening under your nose right now. This is the revolution. People that are in low paying service industry jobs are leaving the service industry because they have leverage now to get better jobs. And remember after church, when you go to the Cracker Barrel and when you only tipped your waitress $2 on a $150 bill and she had a sour look on her face, you would write a little note and maybe say a prayer for her and say, you know, maybe if you went and got a real job, you wouldn't have these problems. Well, your turkeys have come to roost right. because those people are leaving the service industry and getting better jobs. I went to Charlie's. And so it's going to be real tough on Sunday afternoon to Cracker Barrel to get service on time, and it's your fault. I went to Charlie's yesterday, and uh, they apologized profusely. They had two people in the building. They said six quit the day before. I saw the Hardys on – 59 in i want to say it was foley yesterday they had a sign up that says closes at 2 p.m wow they only got one shift to work so but i don't see a whole lot of people raising hell when 10 out of 15 engineers at alabama shipyard leave in mass to go to work for a competing company nobody says anything about that but when it happens at the low paying low wage jobs like this one, as a matter of fact, people get their ankles up about it. People that are forced to work in conditions like Hooters, they don't do it because they love it. They do it because they can. 
And they're getting out of it now because when not just, I mean, this is a great example of what happens when a service industry job really pushes the limits of what they can really put on you and what their employers are willing to put up with. And people are walking away from it. And it's not hurting the people in the service industry because they can get other jobs. It's hurting the consumer because now the consumer can't go to Hooters and eat $40 worth of wings and tip a buck. Those days are going to be over very, very soon. I, I don't know that I could eat chicken wings and look at somebody in their underwear anyway. I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you could. <laughs> so speaking of food. All right. And we're going from one extreme to the other, right. from Hooters girls to lunch ladies. <laughs> right. Um, food shortage in Baldwin County is improving. We're talking about logistics, infrastructure, right. all this stuff. So, and their uh, clothing. Right. So uh, so anyhow, uh, the supply chain has even affected school lunches here in Baldwin mm-hmm. County. Um, another reason that might be happening is 72,000 truck drivers failed their drug test. Oh, that's like the guys that paint the towers in Fairhope. You know, they couldn't get the tower painted for two years because they couldn't get anybody to pass the drug test. Fairhope tragedies. And then, um, yeah, somehow, and I listened to this a couple times, and I really just didn't get the whole swag of it, but uh, supposedly our... our uh, Secretary of Transportation thinks that uh, racism is built into our infrastructure. It is. This entire country's infrastructure, everything that you do, every road you drive on, every door you walk under has some sort of institutional racism built into it. Absolutely. Holy. I, I'll leave that out there. I, well, no, that I, is, you that can is call me woke or whatever, but the damn the gravel in the interstate system is no different from the wood in the barn where they killed Emmett Till. That's right. I, it's I all agree. there. I agree. It's part of this country. It's a legacy. Wow. So you guys have succumbed to the oh, uh, God. yeah the psychological warfare. Anybody. Good for you. So wrongful death. Or maybe I've been the one waging it all this time. Maybe. Who knew? Wrongful death case involving Bowen County Sheriff's Office continue. A federal judge dismissed Bowen County as well as several defendants in lawsuits resulting from a 2018 deadly eviction. And then um, there was another case that was covered in this article, too. And um, let me think. That's the wrong way interstate case, the Anderson case. And um, everyone in the case uh, was released from liability dismissed as a defendant except for the Loxley police officer who was assigned to this task force with the sheriff and the city of Loxley. So just how many of these municipalities are going to give an officer to the sheriff that he he improperly supervises, causes mayhem, and then the city's on the hook because they sent a man to the sheriff's department? Yep. This qualified immunity immunity and uh, no one's accountable uh and these incidents keep happening and everything the yates case you know is one of the ones that they're talking about here too and that was fiery crash you're talking about was five individuals that were killed in that uh police chase which broke every rule that the baldwin county sheriff's office had uh, and it's going to get worse, well, just, but somebody sooner just or later, know, sooner or later, this has got to get, you know, somebody's got to get spanked. Well, it's going to be the citizens of the artistic metropolis. That is Loxley, Alabama, because in five years after all the lawsuits were said and done and the cities have settled and the sheriff didn't have to pay nothing. When the price of beef jerky goes up four bucks at the gas station, because the city had to increase sales tax. You're not going to be able to blame the president. Right. Right. And the sheriff's office needs <laughs> oversight. You know, them and them uh, investigating themselves uh, should not be going on. That's what's causing a lot of this stuff. So there there have been multiple lawsuits filed already um, in the Astro World concert. Right. What Dozens. do you call it? Uh, was it a riot? Was it a... I don't know what stampede. you call it. Stampede. Stampede. It's a, it's a tragedy is what it is. It's yeah. a tragedy. It sucks. and I, It sucks that it happens, but uh, it, it's tragic when any, there's any loss of life anywhere ever. 
and uh, unless it's the global war on terror, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but the loss of American citizens in American soil is always a tragedy, and this is uh, something that, like most tragedies, could have been avoided. 50, and these lawsuits people. are going to these uh, these lawsuits are going to dig and expose some sausage that a lot of people really don't care to be aware of how it's made. Hey, right. Rain, Rains, what do you think a judge in Texas would say if the people that put this concert on said, well, judge, um, we can't afford to pay all these claims. Anyway, we'll get to that in a little while. I think he, I think he'd laugh at him. <laughs> Breaking news. Breaking news. I'll take this one two hours ago, our time. The judge over the conservatorship has freed Britney Spears. She oh my is no God. longer under a conservatorship in the state of California. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife. I was so worried about that. I'm so I was glad too. Britney is free. Well, it's legal news. I so hope she doesn't go to through. Hooters. So, man fatally shot by Kyle Rittenhouse allegedly threatens to kill him. And then you saw the exchange between the judge and the prosecutor beforehand right right and then judge and rittenhouse trial allows jury to consider that teen provoked attack he was carrying an illegal weapon right i, I don't know if it was it did were you saying he bought it illegally no i'm saying he was underage and carrying the gun i don't think that he had a license to do that underage he couldn't even drive I, I don't know that there's any kind of prohibition against carrying a long gun around in public Regardless of your age, well, there is a, there should be. I'm uh, gonna. I took a shotgun to show and tell when I was in fifth grade. Oh, it was man. a different time, you, know, you understand, before everybody was woke or full of shit. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, because just because I think about institutional racism doesn't mean I ever went to my senior finals with a shotgun on the rack of my truck. But whatever. Right. Um, the uh, one thing I'll say about this: it's a very, very unpopular opinion of which I possess many. But um, Harry is a lawyer. I think you'll have to agree when it gets in court, it's about the law. And if I'm not mistaken and I'm not too terribly far off base in my experience and knowledge, I believe the prosecution is going to lose this one because it's a case about the law. And what you bring up about the judge is most certainly correct. And while I've heard the judge say some pretty awful things, I hadn't heard him say many incorrect things yet. I hadn't so, either, and the and the way the testimony's going is, uh, you know, the guy threatened to kill him. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a sad state of affairs that such a uh, moral tragedy ends up in court to be decided by the law when something as moral as this needs to be decided by, you know, people that are on the right side of morality. Oh, I'm sorry. We're talking about Rittenhouse. I thought we were talking about abortion again. My bad. <laughs> well, the thing that gets me the most is uh, I, I don't know, man. If I see somebody with a, you know, a rifle magazine in it, he's carrying it in such a way as he knows how to shoot somebody. Well, the last damn thing I'm going to do is go up to him and try to take the damn thing away from him or cause a fuss with him. You know, I mean... Uh, I just couldn't believe the amount of people that were around him provoking him because he had the gun. I was very surprised by that. Well, I can't believe he took a shot to the head with a skateboard and kept walking. No kidding. That blows me away. I've been hit with a skateboard before, and it's one of the few times I've been knocked unconscious, and it wasn't even on purpose. They chased him down to do it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that came out in that trial that were surprising to a lot of people right and i think that the prosecutor was fishing for a mistrial he knew he was sunk and he well, brought I, he brought up things that i he was told kind of to. i kind of thought that too that did cross my mind yeah well. that's, i mean you could tell pretty early on pretty early on in the prosecution's case that it was pretty close to eject 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 right and yeah. it was like we need a mistrial because we need to do this over again and right. we're not going to get it so, Ahmad Arbery murder trial is going on, and one of the police officers took the stand and said they plan to give him a trespassing warning before. You know, what would you what would you have charged this man with walking through a construction site? 
Well, we did give him a warning now this for is, trespassing. This is an example. This is an example of the exact same thing. These guys did something deplorable, did something absolutely awful. They murdered this kid, and they're going to go down for it. And it's the same law that's going to put them in jail that's going to set Kyle Rittenhouse free. Is that not? And I know that's a tough pill for people to swallow, but that's a fact. That's irony, I tell you. Well, did you know that Georgia actually has a statute that says you can use a certain amount of force to uh, conduct a citizen's arrest? And they recently took that law off the books this past legislative session because it's going to give these guys some cover. Believe me. That's right. So, more breaking news. Today, Steve Bannon. Aren't you a Navy guy, Paul? No. Marine Corps. Uh, He was a a, a naval officer. My God. My God. Call a a a Marine. Call a a Marine a squid. What the hell? My God. You're lucky I don't have a long gun. So she didn't call him a reservist. He was indicted by a grand jury on Friday on two counts of criminal contempt after he refused to comply with subpoenas related to the House investigation into the January 6th Capitol riots. The new Ollie North. I mean, did so did the U.S. Marshals go out and arrest him for criminal contempt and take him to jail uh, and he bonds out? I mean, it's not like a real court. I would think he would, I would think it would go down like that. I want to, I, I need to ask some of my federal friends what they know about that. All right, here's the numbers. 46.9 million infected in the U.S. with SARS-CoV-2 with 761,377 deaths. Wow, three-quarters of a million people. So we have a magic pill, Paul. What's that? Pfizer has a pill that when administered with an antiviral that's very popular with people treating AIDS patients has an 89% what cuts the risk of hospitalization right 89 right i don't know what's wrong with this announcement the last time pfizer came up with a drug that was supposed to be for something else called it a wonder drug everybody in the country bought at least four or five doses of it as far as i know the little blue pill everybody remember what it was yeah it was supposed to re- lower your blood blood pressure and it gave you an erection that's right yeah oh. so yeah, head your bets on pfizer folks <laughs> hold the long position <laughs> Uh, so my ears yeah well, right so uh my ears still ringing we still don't know what the uh mu variant is doing and here is what i wanted to talk about so i'm listening to npr and i come across this story the other day and uh do, do you know how uh are y'all familiar with lyme disease right and so yeah very deer don't really suffer from Lyme disease, or at least we don't think they do. They, they carry it. But they, they're they a... They're, rats. That's right. And what... So Iowa, of all places, their uh, wildlife management people uh, went out and collected samples and even like got the, the guys on the road crew to take samples of dead deer yeah. and send them the samples. They were astonished. The, the infection rate among white-tailed deer... Is five times the infection rate of the population in Iowa at the time. Now, whenever that research was done, mm. I think it was in March. So anyway, um, we're looking at a species that could potentially be a carrier for this until the end of time. And there's we're a whole lot of deer. Here in, as a supplement to this, and I wish I'd have known we were going to talk about it because I'd have put together access to it, but I'm sure Harry can find it. There is a study taking place in Texas right now reviewing the presence of the COVID-19 and its variants among the feral hog population here. And uh, we're looking at a similar story, but the data is not complete. It hasn't been released or peer reviewed yet, but it is something being studied here in Texas. Interesting. And this is in conjunction with the university in uh, uh, New Mexico. I as heard well. about that. That's studying it. So there's a look at the Southeastern United States by county. Hot spots last week, hot spots this week. You see Tuscaloosa. It don't look good. Don't, don't. don't. That's only red for one reason, Harry. <laughs> right. Hey, we're going to get to Tuscaloosa here in a minute. I, I got both barrels loaded. Uh, Baltimore County cases total 37,785. Total deaths 580. Deaths and laps 14 days one. 
Community level of transmit current level of community transmission is moderate. One in five hospitalized for COVID in Alabama are fully vaccinated. Wow. So maybe we shouldn't just blame the unvaccinated folk. They only It's obesity. <laughs> So, uh, no mo, no little, mo. Little no mo news. No mo. Katie's catching you, brother. Oh, so get this. Richard Shelby's dumping five million bucks into her pocket. Well, he can't take it with him. You can't take it with you, especially when you're his age. <laughs> That's right. You might as well give it to Katie. In fact, I bet he gives her a little bit more before it's all over with. For the second you heard consecutive it here day. First, folks. Polling data is showing a tightening race for the Republican U.S. Senate nomination that could lead to the potential head-to-head matchup between U.S. Rep. Mo Brooks, Republican Huntsville, and former Business Council of Alabama head Katie Britt. That will be the race in Alabama to talk about next year. And so, and here, backstory podcast was on the ball from the get go. That's right. Yep. We've been talking about this since she announced. And so here's her here's her stick, Paul. You've been alive. Longer, I've you've been in office longer than I've been alive. That was her comment to Brooks, and it's true. <laughs> He's been an elected official that long. No mo, no mo, no mo. All right, Paul. Hey, early poll show Fairhope residents prioritize growth management and character to retention. Well, now that is what the rip report ripreport.com is about this week is about the uh, planning you know there's a planning district 8 and planning district 37 that's the one on lawrence road uh and i went out to lawrence road and looked at it's a beautiful beautiful farm country i mean just they're gonna shove a bunch of houses in there and just uh i can see where the people on that road are very upset and uh, the thing around the county right now is uh, unzoned areas need to be zoned. So it sounds like people are finally catching on uh, to having some control over their property districts. That's the number one thing that's going on in Fairhope. The second thing is uh, Council President Jack Morrell is going to be relinquishing his seat. However, the rumor that we're getting is that he does not have the support uh, support for him to ride into his 10th year as a uh, council president and with the 10 years that he's been there he has one heck of a lot of weight that he has left and a lot of problems so i hope that whoever is elected understands the burden that is going to be following them uh once they're elected but uh, we'll we'll get that more in the uh rip report other than that, uh, I don't know what they're going to be able to do as far as controlling development uh, other than the planning and people becoming engaged in their communities. And hopefully that's exactly what is going on. Uh, people are very upset with Fairhope and the fact now that they're going to be annexing property in new districts and putting you know apartment complexes way out from the center of Fairhope, but it affects all the people in the rural communities that didn't want them. So you know you can't keep people from selling their land, but this is what's happening. And then uh, if you look at the from the Grand Hotel over to the RSA property, that's coming all the way up on Twin Beach Road, which is a uh, predominantly a black area in that one area there their property values are going to go through the roof so they need to uh, be zoned because if they're zoned to have a little bit more control over their property and maybe get a fair market value when they do decide to sell uh other than that you know, i want to encourage everybody to get their land yap uh you know we cover a lot of political news and some articles but we don't cover everything in there there's Music venues and uh, sports, uh, all types of politics in Mobile. You know, we're generally covering this over on the Eastern Shore. One hey, Paul, thing, yeah. Let's, let me let me run through this real quick. Okay? All right, all right. And not everyone is happy about the population explosion in Fairhope. More people and more businesses are moving into the city, and that is not going over well with a lot of people. Today, city leaders got an earful during the first in a series of meetings leading up to Fairhope's new comprehensive plan. NBC 15's James Gordon joins us now. 
James, people seem to want the city to hold back on growth. That's right, because of land use, housing, traffic, and infrastructure. Those are the main reasons. How to control all of this? Everywhere you look, there's heavy machinery, new homes, road construction, and traffic. I don't know at this point there's a way to slow it down because there's a lot of things that have already been permitted and things that have already been approved that just haven't built out yet. And that's another thing that we're seeing is subdivisions and things that were approved two and three years ago are just now starting to build out. The mayor says she and the city council are not ruling out the possibility of a moratorium on development. But it's possible not even that would be of much use because so much is happening so fast right now. It's a possibility, and then there has been discussion around a moratorium, but, um, you know, there's not been any, um, you know, nothing has been voted on or yeah. we've not drafted anything. So it's you're, just been you're casual not, you're conversation. Not ruling that out. No. Today's packed room is proof that people in Fairhope are having the same debate as the city begins to develop its new comprehensive plan. I'd like to see the growth slow down a little bit. Um, and, and I would like to see it coordinated with the other towns along our corridor here, either you know, north of us, but even south of us, because they're all growing. And Lady, you are barking up the wrong tree. Well, the other thing, too, that people need to understand is that the entire city council, and especially Mayor Sullivan, were totally supported by uh, developers. Uh, local developers working all in this area. And her quote was that uh, uh, Fairhope was going to embrace growth. And that's exactly what is going on, is that they have embraced growth. Now, as far as the subdivisions that were approved years ago, <coughs> uh, years ago, we also went to planning and zoning and said, look, you should have a sunset clause on these things where these people are uh, getting a subdivision plan and then they sit there for four or five years and then come back and say, oh, I'm going to do my subdivision now. Well, there should be a time limit on those. And that's what's happening now is, and I remember this happening years ago in Fairhope. They would pass one subdivision after another after another. And I'm thinking, well, when are they going to build them? Because it was a downturn at the time. Here we go. All this property has been bought. All of this is going to come up. And one thing Sherry Sullivan is saying is true she can't stop it now because it's too late and they're embracing the construction. Turn into the Growth. skid. Right, right. <laughs> uh, something on a lighter note in Fairhope, the Fairhope Film Festival is starting November 13th. <laughs> well, you show me one independent film that isn't about gay cowboys eating pudding. Um, that's at 7 to 10 p.m., $50 tickets. Uh, they're going to be... It's a red carpet party. Right. That's a red carpet party and everything. You might want to check that out. Booze and a pretty good caterer is going to be there. I think I might slide over there and right. check it out. One of the things, the cover story this week in Lanyap is uh, New Wave. Crime hits the I-65 Beltway as police take aim at motels by Dale Leash. This is uh, also covered in a couple of other articles, but if you've been watching the news lately, it's pretty alarming. I mean, it's every single night in Mobile, somebody's getting shot or taking a shot at. Uh, a lot of this is in public. A lot of it's in the daylight. And a lot of it centers around a lot of these uh, small hotels. Here's one thing that's in the article I thought was real interesting is Mobile Police Department has been called to the address associated with in-town suites, get this, 463 times since 2019. Reigns, I would pull their business license so Absolutely. fast. They what would be out of hell? business so fast. That includes 128 calls from January to July of 2021. Those calls me, were mostly associated with Let me tell you one thing, with, so tell you one thing Houston does well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Houston, Texas is considered by most experts in the field to be the North American hub of human trafficking. And one of the things that the city of Houston did a, a few years ago was enact an ordinance that said, once you get X amount of calls to service to your property, that uh, due process is instituted to possibly revoke your business license. And well, that had a bit of a knockback effect on bars because while this was aimed at targeting massage parlors and places like that, 
uh, places associated with human trafficking, there were a lot of bars in Houston because they'd have fights or somebody wreck a car in the parking lot. They were racking up calls for service and they had to make kind of a, a hearing exclusion built into that law because they were doing it so often that it was starting to affect the bars. But they did put a limit. They said, you know, if you get over X amount of service calls, we're going to initiate due process. And they use that to su shut down nuisance businesses. And nobody's convenience store of repute, nobody's liquor store, nobody's adult video store has ever been shut down by one. They've always been places that are actual nuisances. And why a place has 400 something calls over the course of a year and it doesn't have some extreme extreme observation by the city as to that due process i don't understand i don't either i would think the police would be screaming their heads off and another uh article uh by ashley uh tries so many questions uh hinges on the same thing homeless and uh some of the reasons for the crime in that area but I thought that this was pretty interesting. She quotes, I know Mayor Sandy Simpson, Police Chief Paul Prine, and DA Ashley Rich don't want criminals walking around the streets of Mobile. And I get judges just can't endlessly deny bonds to every offender. But man, oh man, in a city where you now wake up every morning and ask, I wonder how many people got shot in Mobile last night, how is it possible Listen to this, folks, that 125 people who are facing murder charges are currently out on bond in Mobile. That should scare the ever-loving hell out of you. I mean, that is just, that's as, as hard to believe a statistic as it is about them calling them to the hotel and everything. So statistically, homicide has the lowest rate of recidivism of any other crime. <laughs> well, oh, well, I guess. What is that? Jesus, what? I, I was going to call the FBI. They don't, they don't kill. Head. They call you a serial killer when you kill several people or a mass murderer. <laughs> right. But, well, you know, very few though. people are mass murderers. Most oh. people kill one person for a dance. Well, for what they believe to be a good reason, I guess. And uh, Rob Holbert, I uh, hope he's doing better. Oh, damn the torpedoes. We have to stay vigilant. Uh, pretty much addresses the same thing. As everybody knows, there was shooting in Ladd Stadium, and immediately after that happened, ball team started, uh, you know, bailing from even going no, over the there. The school board broke their relationship with the Ladd Stadium. <laughs> right. They said, we're uh, not doing that. We're going to build three new stadiums at our schools. Right. Uh, but the bottom line is that while crime is on the upswing nationally, we're not helping anything by not doing the best job possible or letting our guard down. Uh, let's get the murderers to trial more quickly and not half-ass crowd security. Who knows? We might have fewer and fewer outrageous shootings. Uh, certainly, certainly they have got to do something because it's spiraling out of control. This uh, mobile sounds like Birmingham now, I tell you. And then uh, the last two that we have, uh, or the last one that we have, Harry, is um, big money. Uh, this is by Gabe Times. It's a lawsuit. Big that, money. You know, the lawsuit that uncovers the value of the privately owned Baldwin County Sewer Service. That's by Gabe Times. We've been talking about this a while. Now, this is related back to last week's article, which was motion denied. Judge allows fraud claims against Bellaton developers to continue. So this is an update uh, on that lawsuit, and this is also related to those of you that have been following it, the um, uh, straw man case. But these are fraud cases that we're covering in the news, and it just makes me wonder when I read all of this, what is there anybody else of any other authority that's going to do, you know, anything at all? Uh, and one of the exhibits with this, just to give you an idea of the value of Baldwin County sewer, uh, one of the exhibits, uh, Chasen and Collins, the attorneys, introduced the distribution of the net income of Baldwin County sewer for one single month in March of 2020. Burke's company, Clarence Burke, that is, under Wolf Creek Industries, received roughly 191000 Delaney's company, Christopher 16, 
got 191,000 and Cunningham Supersonic LLC got 48,000 and Mr. John Avant of Southern Avant got 8,000. This is for one month. Now, if you Hey, wait a second. Go ahead. Avant is a 2% owner, 2%. He gets 8 grand a month. 2% he gets eight grand a month. All right, and, so, and you go and you will find Mister A uh, Avant on dozens of LLCs. All all of this, you know, we're talking about the uh, uh, Lawrence Road District Thirty Seven, and that's one of the things that they're looking at is all the LLCs and different companies, and nobody knows who's building what or where this money is coming from, who's financing it. Harry and I have been talking about this and. We're certainly not going to say what we think right now, but it does make you wonder who who are the financial, you know, people behind all of this. Uh, one thing's for sure: a lot of these developers with the small company, I mean, uh, like Dr. Horton, they could care less about your neighborhood or what it looks like, or how many damn cars are going to be on the road or anything else. So. Get zoned, people. Pay attention and get zoned. And if you want to know what's going on, you should follow these cases because this is outright land fraud. And, uh, you know, they're saying that they don't have the money to pay it. And what was it? Well, wait a second. Let's back up. Yeah. When when they when Chasen deposed Mr. Burke. Right. In this article, they quoted him as saying what? He didn't have the money on hand to repay the six hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was owed on the swimming pool, right? Which is why they went into to discovery and uh, made issue of these uh, monthly dis- distributions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't have any money. Also, uh, in here it says that Mister Burke owns a condo in Costa Rica and a sixty foot fishing boat down there. Uh, it's not in this article, but it is. That has been stated before, right? He spends quite a bit. I think he spends more time in Costa Rica than he does in Baldwin County. And uh, uh, for that, I can understand. 51 foot oh, sport fishing, but it is in oh, that article. Oh, yeah. It Got is a mind like article. a lamp. Mind. Well, get me. Like a steel trap, son. Yeah. Well, you know, you don't have to. Hate doesn't have any money if he's got a two million dollar condo and a 53 foot sport fishing boat yeah Yeah, i'm pretty sure judge bishop could liquidate that to settle up this little swimming pool thing don't you right and if you read the uh straw man one and the actions of don't you have a uh uh, that spider web oh yeah yeah well you see all the people along the bottom burke delaney cunningham and john avant they're all the owners right and then the people above them are all of the well people in the in the straw man lawsuit and all uh, all their interconnections right right same people same thing over and over again so maybe and the and the, and the common theme is catalyst yeah Catalyst. catalyst good old boys catalyst all this being allowed and remember mr dorsey worked for mr burke while he was on the county commission right and they changed the law so that Baldwin county sewer service and if you read the article it goes into a prospectus from a bank about their you know, financial position and all this they're saying they're worth 93 million bucks isn't that right 93 point Three million, almost a hundred million dollars. Uh, uh, Baldwin County Sewer has a fair market value of ninety three point three million dollars. Yep, that's what I remembered. So, so anyway, but they um, can't pay uh, six hundred, and they don't pay the county a franchise fee. And you, there's no one you can go bitch to if you don't like their rates. Yeah, county just or their them, service. County lets them do whatever the hell they want. Well, you got to remember, they had a county commissioner on payroll, or several. Right, right. So while we're talking infrastructure, everybody is familiar with Airport Boulevard, the traffic jam that is Airport Boulevard, uh, going from the inner from uh, I-65 at the mall all the way out to the airport. It's just it's a thirty minute drive. It's fifteen should be should be a five minute drive, but because of all the Commercial development and everything that moved out towards the airport. So now they're talking about moving the airport back downtown to Brooklyn Field, which is where Airbus is building 
aircraft now. Right. And um, I, I've just never heard of a bit. It's kind of like the Batman plot where the guy was going to build another power plant when they really didn't need one. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's super villain kind of stuff. It does make you wonder why they're moving that thing when they got one out there like that. So they must have a lot of infrastructure problems at the other end of Mobile right. to get to it. it I can a, tell you. It was a brilliant idea to build that thing way the hell out of town, wasn't yeah, it? I can tell you one thing. That's the most damn expensive airport I have ever flown out of, period. And the least user-friendly. Period. I always go to Pensacola. Yeah, I do too. I don't fly to Mobile. Oh, I go to Pensacola or New Orleans. So... <sighs> Tower opens at newly named Gulf Shores International Airport, uh-huh. formerly Jack Edwards Airport. And uh, I see a bunch of people that's I our, recognize. That's our first uh, international airport in Baldwin County. The next one's going to be the Burrell Snedeker Fairhope International. But airport. you know what makes it international? They got a tower now. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they could have been internationally flying at night into the one in Fairhope. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> That's been rumored forever. So, Range, you still there? I ain't heard you in a while. I'm hanging on by a thread. Okay. So, I'm here. So, tell us about uh, the incoming missile that I missed the other night. This is a little red blob of it. I guess it was more spectacular if you could have seen it uh, well, smoking you know, across the, the sky. SpaceX capsule. The SpaceX capsule made re-entry about 260 miles south of y'all, south southeast. Right. Uh, most of the time, when spacecraft that we launched into orbit, when they make re-entry, they usually do it in the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. But SpaceX has been choosing to do it in the Gulf of Mexico. And so, what you got to see was about a three-minute shooting star. Now, the longest shooting star I've ever seen was about I don't know a second and a half long, and it was pretty spectacular. This was a re-entry of the SpaceX capsule, and it shot a laser line across the sky as it made re-entry. And if you were on the beach in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, or in uh, down at the down at the beach in Orange Beach or Gulf Shores, you probably got a pretty good look at it. And if you're over in Destin, you may have heard the sonic boom that it created when it entered the atmosphere, uh, you know, because it was going beyond the speed of sound. And uh, it blazed a trail across the sky, across the sky, and splashed down to the Gulf of Mexico. And everybody at the uh, crew two was taken on board a private vessel, which was probably better accommodated than the USS Kitty Hawk. Which I don't know if you guys right. know this or not. But when they picked up the Apollo mission astronauts, it didn't have air conditioning. It's so a little warm down there. I'm sure that uh, I'm sure SpaceX probably did a little bit better job with their recovery vessel, but. Uh, it was a it was a pretty, pretty spectacular sight to see. Some of my friends that are photographers got some good footage of it that I saw online. I wished I'd have been down there to see it, and I wish that I hadn't have been bending Harry's ear about God knows what at the time that it went down. I know he he called me to say, "Hey, you got to go outside in fifteen minutes to watch the thing." And then he, next thing we know, it's like forty five minutes later. He goes, "Oh man, you missed the damn thing." <laughs> yeah, thanks for the call, Reigns. <laughs> So uh, this is the uh, new boat launch down at the Intracoastal Waterway. This is the Foley Beach Express, and the bridge would be right there if the map continued. Um, construction on uh, ICW boat launch ahead of schedule. It'll be the largest boat launch in coastal Alabama and cost uh, $17 million on 42 acres. And this is looking south across the Intracoastal Waterway. And then you see a shot back north. You see all the riprap they put in, and those are the uh, boat ramps there to your right. Right. And uh, anyway, they got a – no wonder they're ahead of schedule. They got a damn barge and the, a bunch of track hose. The largest one in coastal Alabama, but, uh, you know, we don't have that many miles of coastal Alabama either. No. And Land Yap names my alma mater, Baldwin County High School, Land Yap Team of the Week. The They'll be playing tonight for the 6A Region 1 uh, championship. Good luck, in the state guys. playoffs. Good luck. James Carville blames Virginia loss. That would be the governor's race on right. wokeness. Wokeness gets a lot of blame. People are tired of it. Mm-hmm. They don't want no more. And I'm pretty sure all the mouth breathers voted red. Yeah. I want my cabana and Belize back. 
<laughs> so um, carnivals to resume cruises out of Mobile March fifth, and that's right around. That. That's right after Mardi Gras, isn't it? That is. Rains. Uh, about a month after Mardi Gras, but yeah. That's my birthday, but I don't think I'll be taking a cruise. I don't like big crowds or groups confined. Well, you wouldn't want to be on that. And I don't like sleeping below deck on a boat. No, sir. Me either. I learned my lesson on that one, didn't I, Reigns? Yes, you did. Yes, I did. Okay, so what's going on this weekend? I'm going to the Sidewalk Film Festival or whatever it's called. I'm going to watch my grandson wrestle for the all-day Saturday. Should be interesting. I'd like to watch that I'm, because that's a big little bastard. I wouldn't want to wrestle him. I'm, I'm, I bet he can ragdoll another eight-year-old. Just, well, he's only 12. Oh, is he 12? I mean, he's he's 12 years old, and I know I didn't even touch weights till I was in about 19 or something, so I can't even imagine what he's going to look like in five years if he sticks with us. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you guys can tell from my web camera, but I've never touched weights. <laughs> uh, I, I somehow know that I believe that. <laughs> uh. All right. Well, everybody have a good weekend and um, go check out the Fairhope Film Festival. There, there are at least two movies that aren't about gay cowboys eating pudding. <laughs> well, you show me one independent film that isn't about gay cowboys eating pudding. Well, I've got one thing to add to hear the veritable end of our podcast, and that is when you hear the horns in the sky and the oceans boil and the land is rent asunder and a great lamb-horned beast emerges, you will know that for once I completely agree and am here to endorse an article written by none other than Jeff Poor. It's called The Unholy Alliance. And it's absolutely fantastic piece of piece of column work. You can read it in the Mobile Lanyard app this week. And I urge everybody within the sound of my voice and in the greater, at least third grade level readership of the state of Alabama to give it a read because it's really, really good.